Hey, what's going on everyone? How you guys doing? Matt Jarbo here at Three Buck Theater, and today we're going to be breaking down the South Park vaccination special. This is one that, uh, I gotta say, I've been looking forward to for a while. That has a lot to do with the fact that I just really love South Park, and I love their take on current events, and over the course of the past year, there hasn't really been a lot to laugh at, so I thought it'd be great to see just exactly how, you know, they would tackle this whole COVID situation. So it starts off with them at Walgreens now with COVID-19 vaccinations. And we can see here that there's a security guard and a whole line of people, and it is bumping some of the best EDM I've heard in quite some time. So obviously something crazy is happening over there at the Walgreens. Mr. Mackey tries to get on in to get his vaccination, but the tattooed security guard is basically like, no way, Jose, you're not an essential worker and you're not a person that's on the list, which is interesting because Mackey is a teacher. Now we have other people like Butter's parents that are trying to say that they are uh, they that they have pre-existing conditions and comorbidities, that they are definitely in the need to get the vaccine. What cracked me up though about this particular shot was a guy with the NRA hat in the back there who, you know, probably wouldn't really be in the vaccination train. He probably would be a little bit against it, but they always had to find a way, you know, to throw something like that in there. Uh, then we cut over to the boys who are back in school now. The lockdown has been lifted. They are no longer on Zoom and they're having some issues with their friendship. The bro ship hasn't really been able to, you know, kind of sustain itself over the course of the lockdown. And this is actually reminiscent of a lot of people who have gone through divorces or breakups or just been put in situations where their friendships and relationships didn't necessarily survive. And the boys here are trying to find the dynamic and they want to play a prank on their teacher, Mrs. Johnson, by putting ketchup packets on her chair to make it seem that she got her period. Even Cartman at this moment in time kind of admits that they're phoning it in, but, um, you know, is that to do with the joke itself or the show coming up on 25 years? It's a very interesting question. Nonetheless, uh, there we get to see that they did in fact succeed in the prank, putting the ketchup packets that are very, very interestingly looking like blood on the back of Mrs. Johnson's white shirt. And she is unaware of it until she is. And then she freaks out and loses it on the class because she is not able to get a vaccine because the government doesn't deem her a teacher to be an essential worker. And that, of course, is a big crux of the whole episode. She then decides that she is going to quit and she storms out on the class who now blame the boys for everything. But guess who's back in town? Well, that, of course, is Mr. Garrison, who is <laughs> back to being his old Garrison self. And what's funny is he comes back to South Park and he doesn't understand that everybody hates him. Everybody hates him. Uh, so he decides to go back to the school in hopes of becoming a teacher once again to go back to his normal life before he uh, came out as gay, before he transitioned into a woman, and before he became president of the United States. But he has to have a, uh, you know, he has to have security. And so this is Mr. Security. That's his bodyguard, okay? Uh, now we cut back over to a news reporter, and this guy pops up a bunch of times in the episode, and I didn't really feel like... It added much value. I kind of feel like anything with this guy was a bit on like the filler side of things, but he's trying to get in any way he can. And the security guard is still denying him because all the old people in town are getting vaccinations, in which case they decide to go out and start partying. You got Stan's grandfather here, more or less harassing Stan about not being able to go out and do fun things because the elderly were the first ones to get the vaccine. Mr. Garrison is now somehow, somehow, I don't know, somehow he finds himself back being the teacher and he is furious uh, that or he's glad to be back. But, you know, he's he's upset that things are the way that they are. Uh, but the boys realize that they don't want Mr. Garrison back, that they don't actually want him back at all. What they want is Mrs. Johnson back. They want their old teacher, but they have to find a way in order to make it work. They have to figure out a way to save their friendship. Uh, and to make it work. And in this particular scene, we start to get this whole breakdown over like who is going to who Kenny is going to live with in the divorce, which, again, is another common theme in divorcing and breakups and whatnot. Who gets the friends? Who gets the kids? Kenny is the odd man out in this particular situation. Then it cuts over to Mr. Garrison at Walgreens and everyone is just kind of staring at him. 
right? Because they they know who he is, they know what he's done, and he's still trying to play oblivious, I mean, to, to, to the most of it. However, the Whites, who appeared in a, uh, a couple seasons ago, they come back up now, full QAnon, and they're asking Garrison just what to do. What 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 is his message for them? He is the leader of Q, and he tells them to blow shit out their dickhole. And uh, they don't quite understand what that means, but they're trying to make it work. Now, Mr. Mackey, on the other hand, furious that he is also not able to get his hands on the vaccine, more or less uh, blows up at the boys who are trying to go to guidance counseling in order to find themselves in a better position with their friendship. And he basically says, if you want to get Mrs. Johnson back, you need to get us all vaccines. And that, of course, is exactly what the boys decide to do. But in the meantime, the QAnon in South Park decide to meet up in the white basements to discuss what that blow shit out your dickhole line meant. What I love here is that, yes, they are making fun of the QAnon shaman, and that to me is pretty damn funny. And Mr. White's got his little board right there trying to, you know, figure out exactly what Mr. Garrison was saying, but they decide to come up with the idea that they need to be the ones to teach the students. Uh, and everyone seems to get on board, and we can see here that you've got the whole blow shit out your dickhole uh, and how it also translates to Latin, which stands for, uh, like, teach them or something. Basically, it's just like, they, I mean, I love the train of thought here, because this is exactly how Q thinks, where they, they run, like, numericals and these weird kind of mathematics and all of this absolute reaching in order to get to the conclusion that they want. They have their cognitive bias, and this is a scene that aptly, aptly, aptly displays everything with it. Uh, from here, the boys decide to put their plan into action to get their hands on those vaccines. So they get an old lady and they create a little group called Community Kids. Community Kids with a K on community in order to sweet talk their way in, which it actually does. And once they get inside, uh, the old lady starts to hustle them for more money because she's already gotten her vaccine. So when the whole thing blows up, Stan kicks the doctor in the leg and they steal the vaccine and they take off into the night or well the afternoon really but from here we get uh more information about tutoron which is the organization created by QAnon inside south park that are going to be the new private tutors for all of these kids in which case the QAnon shaman here uh more or less it tries to radicalize uh this young boy i think his name is scott i think it's scott is the name of this character uh but from there Garrison goes back to school the next day and finds out that all the kids are gone because all the kids are now being tutored by Tutoranon, of which he is effectively the leader of, and he doesn't like that because he just wants to go back to a normal life, which is, that's his entire motivation. His entire motivation in this episode is to go back to a normal life. Uh, but the boys are now in possession of the vaccine and they are now trying to make it right. So Cartman calls Mrs. Johnson and he's trying to work a deal with her uh, about he apologizes for the joke about the period joke. And then he's like, look, we got the vaccines. Uh, we just need to find a way to get them to you. And you guys are going to be good. We, we just want to put everything back to normal. Unfortunately, news broke that the boys escaped with the vaccinations. Uh, and so people have been uh, coming on over and they're trying to talk them into giving them their shot because they just want one shot at life. They want to they want to take their shot and then go back to to doing the best that they can. I didn't quite I mean, I get the symbolism, I think, for like, you know, the shot of vaccine, getting another shot at life sort of thing. Uh, or another chance at life. I get the I get the metaphor. I, I just feel like this whole thing kind of fell flat a little bit in the episode. That, of course, is just my take on it. Uh, but then we get into the propaganda part of the episode, and I thought this was hysterical. Uh, there's a, 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 a somber video about Jeffrey Epstein and how he killed himself and how the, uh, the elite uh, take the adrenochrome from children in order to make themselves feel younger and live longer. We see Hillary Clinton here, and I'm not too sure who the other guy is right there uh, on the right. I don't quite know who that is, but we can see that they are just sucking it down like children with a juice box. And then you get the shot here. You get the shot of Obama just knifing a kid in the <laughs> like what the hell what the hell just why and that look of utter fear on the kid's face is just hysterical <laughs> anyway uh, <laughs> garrison and mr security do track down one of the women in the Tudor Anon to get the information out of her. And in the process of choking her out for the intel, uh, they kill her. 
they just they snap her neck and then they leave. And Clyde right there just goes, well, 2021 is going to be just like 2020, <laughs> which I thought was the best line in the whole episode, because, yeah, a dead teacher, a dead QAnon teacher on his floor, a private tutor woman dead, killed right in front of him. And of course, it's eh, this year is going to be just like last year, which is very true in, in, in the pantheon of South Park's existence. Uh, Cartman here is uh, trying to, uh, you know, arrange potentially for some earnings. And this is another interesting play because we start to see this dynamic breakdown where they got the vaccinations uh, for the teachers in order to put things right. But Cartman, being the ever big schemer that he is, decides that he wants to actually go and try to make money because people are offering to pay him several thousand dollars. No one buys it. No one believes it. But Kyle, on the other hand, gets a call from his mom and his dad who very much guilt trip him into uh, you know, giving them the vaccines. And so Kyle going against his own moral code, so to speak, uh, gets caught attempting to steal the vaccines and refilling them with this <laughs> cooler. Stan calls him out and the two, uh, you know, they kind of get into it a little bit where uh, it's just, you know, their relationship is being fractured. They're, the, the, the bromance between Stan and Kyle that's been going on for so many years is definitely fractured in this episode. Uh, from here, Mr. Garrison and Mr. Security track down the whites and they hold them hostage in order to get to the bottom of the Tudoranon situation. But Mr. White is able to convince Mr. Garrison to go uh, with him. But we're going to get to that here in a second. Then it cuts back to the boys who are now on their way to the school in order to be able to give the vaccines to the teacher. Uh, they've all kind of made that choice at this point, and that is all good. But they are stopped by the cuties. The... <laughs> The antithesis to the community kids. And we can see Butters is right there. And they call him out too. And Butters, I love it. I love Butters so much. I just love Butters. He's all like, I just needed to belong to something after being locked up for so long or believe in something, which is a good, which is a good point to make. It's a great point to make in this particular regard. This is exactly what's going on. I thought this was hysterical. So then they all decide to fight with Butters out there just waving the American flag and everything else. That was great. Um, and then we cut back over to the White's basement, uh, full on QAnon headquarters for South Park. And uh, we got the Whistling Willie's pedo ring uh, with a Pete's Comet Pink Pong Pizzeria. Um, Willie Gate is real. I, I got what is what is I, I maybe I'm missing the the Willie Gate reference. So I got to look into that a bit more. But uh, they start to show the showcase the board, which we see Oprah and Tom Hanks and Trey Parker and Matt Stone from basketball are clearly the elites right there next to Ellen, who uh, who are suckling down the adrenochrome of children in order to stay young. But then something happens where the elites, again, and this is where it goes in a true South Park fashion, when the elites transport them to an icy plane and they don't know what's going on. And there they are for the hot minute uh, trying to figure it all out. We, the audience right there with them. But then it cuts back to the boys who have now escaped and are trying to arrange to go and meet the teachers at the school, they're trying to figure it all out. And of course, you know, that's where we find them. The, the, we see this massive army has has come to South Park Elementary because they want the community kids to give them the vaccines. And, I, you know, what I love about this predominantly is that everyone outside of the guy wearing the Q shirt and the, and the Oath Keeper in the background with a P on his hat for Patriot, uh, everyone's wearing masks except the obvious right wingers, which is pretty Pretty damn funny. Uh, from here, we cut back over to the icy plane where we find out that Mr. White is being manipulated by some unseen force and they're able to turn him into, well, a woman. And I honestly thought at this point they were going to be doing like Mrs. Chokes on Dick, which I thought would have been really funny, um, but they didn't. They turned him into a giant penis and I had to blur out or block out his testicles in order to make sure that this video does not get taken down on YouTube because I'm currently facing some trouble on that front. But from here, Garrison uh, realizes that they are, that he is in some weird matrix-like environment and that there are other people that are pulling the strings. And again, him just wanting that normal life decides to work a deal when he when they prove to him that they control uh, the vertical and the horizontal and they control everything. And so what he does is he decides to work with them in order to get back to normal. So Mr. Security then morphs into Mr. Head. So I love how it's kind of taking us back to where things were, taking us back to before they took Garrison on this massively crazy trip that he's been on for like 15 years. 
Uh, but this, then we cut over to a part of the show. I didn't care for this part at all. I, I mean, like, I, I like how they were kind of establishing, like, how to get through the crowd of people to get to the teachers. I liked it. I got a, a kind of like a Dawn of the Dead 2004 vibe out of this thing. But then it cuts into this whole, like, couple minute bit about about like divorced dads and divorced parents, like separating, like how to share their kids. And I, I get the joke and I feel this is kind of, you know, I feel like they know someone in, in real life or they themselves went through this scenario during the lockdown where this is something that they've actually experienced and they just wanted to add it in and I get it. But without that kind of real world context, I feel that it just kind of fell flat to be honest with you. Uh, and then from there, they, they make their way back to the school, them ready to fight once more ready to take on the army, but they don't have to because here comes Mr. Garrison now uh, carrying Mr. White behind him, dragging him behind him. And he is, as you can probably imagine, a giant veiny throbbing penis that I'm just making sure to not show you the entirety of to keep my channel in check. But oddly enough, flowers are growing out of the shaft. Still can't quite figure out that one. But Mr. Garrison comes bearing gifts. He was somehow able to work his magic to work a deal for the safety of South Park by calling in Air Israel in order to provide everybody with vaccines. So now that the whole city has been vaccinated, everyone is going to be okay. So what happens now? The boys make their way into South Park Elementary. Their stolen vaccines in hand in order to give them to the teachers who have been barricaded inside. But unfortunately, it's too late for Mrs. Johnson. She comes out at that last moment and she has a cough. And then she's dead. And then she's dead. And, <laughs> and then the town, they party because they don't need to wear masks or socially distance anymore because everyone has vaccines. Except for the teacher who's dead. But in probably one of the better jokes that kind of finish out the episode, what I really enjoyed here was this last little bit as they're walking away, the four of them, and they're kind of like realizing that their time together is over. They're realizing that the bro ship is over, but they're still going to work and try to keep Kenny whole. They want to do everything for Kenny to do it all for the kids. But then Cartman gets invited to Casa Bonita by a couple of the boys. And then they ask when, and they say it's this next weekend. And that's when Cartman has to watch Kenny. So of course it ends with him saying, ah, shit. But then finally, during the end credit sequence, we find out that Mr. Garrison and Mr. Hat are now back at South Park Elementary in the classroom where it all began and things can return to normal. Life can begin again in South Park, but who knows where that takes us because this was only the vaccination special. Now we know that, <laughs> that South Park has been vaccinated and South Park has absolutely been saved and the boys are saved, but their relationship is in trouble. Their relationship is in dire straits. So what happens next? Who knows? Whenever the new season comes out is when we're finally going to be able to see it. That could be later on this year. That could be sometime this this spring. I don't know. But I, I you know, I like the episode. I thought it was fun. It wasn't the best thing on the planet. I think like it had some good jokes, a lot of funny callbacks. Um, But some of the stuff, you know, is a little bit too long. I just feel like it could have been like a 26 minute episode and then been good. Or they could have added more to it, I think. And extended it to three episodes, but given us more storyline. And, you know, it's it's a hard one to kind of make. But they did it, and it's more South Park. And I've been a fan since, uh, since like, 1997 when I was 15. So here it is, all these years later, and I'm still a diehard fan. So anyway, I had fun breaking this thing down and talking about it. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you want to see more like this from upcoming shows like Falcon and Winter Soldier or other shows and movies that are coming out. I want to change the direction of my channel and to talk more about these kind of things and break them all down and just have these fun conversations. So I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day. Thank you for watching and peace out.